listening, noise, or signal, failure magnifier or success multiplier, one star listening or five star listening. Per the Gottman Institute, listening or the lack thereof is why customers leave, businesses fail, marriages and relationships fall apart, and deals just don't go through. Hello, TEDx Frankfurt. My name is Brigitta Höferle, and I am revealing my inability to listen as I cross cultures from Germany to the US, building our businesses. Listening is the gift of acknowledging that we don't know it all. It's especially a gift to those that think they do. Imagine with me, moving an entire household, business and family, internationally, on your own time and dime. I did. Actually, we did, my husband and I, with our toddler daughter back then. We moved to the United States in a small town in Tennessee from Midtown Munich in Schwabing. I know. <laughs> we moved to the US to establish our business, build a school, and since just crossing cultures is not a small task, on top of that, building a business, buying a house, raising children, I figured, hey, I got this. I know what I need to know. I have all the degrees. I have clear goals. I'm focused on my agenda. <laughs> Yeah, focused on my agenda. Kept me in my head and m let my ego take over. So I gave myself five stars, where in reality, I was maybe a one star. I thought I had it all together, but in reality, it was all falling apart. I wasn't able to relate to others because I was so in my head. It was all about what? Me, me, me. I was blind to other people's values and their personalities, with their uniqueness, with their distinctions, with their fascinating features and nuances. But you don't have time to focus on someone else when you're absorbed with whom? Yourself, exactly. When we're so in our head and so focused on our own thoughts, we miss the rich, and yet so small nuances of the other. We miss those data points that allow us a glimpse into the other person's world. And because I was so in my head and so focused on my success and my goals, I damaged my life, little did I know. My personal life and my business life, it cost me over a half a million dollars. But in reality, in my dull one-star listening, it was costing me something even more precious. The relationships with my children and my husband. To sum up the damage, paying loyal customers, gone. Train staff, gone. Income, gone. But the most important part, the precious time I will never get back with my children, gone. The stars were not aligned for me. I was burned out, my light was dimmed, but I didn't know why. I thought I knew it all, right? Have you ever driven somewhere, like to your office or to your home, and you're suddenly there and you're like, how the heck did I get here? You're so on autopilot because you're doing something that you know how to do. And when you tell yourself, I know that, you're signaling to your brain, no need to pay attention, I got this, turn it off. The greater dilemma with that is that the human brain has the unconscious tendency to fill in the blanks. And out of that, Per the Cygarnik effect, 
the human brain then aptly fills in the data with what we think they're going to say. That's a big problem, especially in listening, because the brain now fills in the blank what the other, piece, pe what the other person is going to see. Aha! That was the moment I realized I wasn't listening to others. I was filling in the... And I was actually waiting, not listening. That's when I decided, enough! There's got to be a better way. So I, declared my, so I declared to myself, I am going to take whatever, I'm going to do whatever it takes to put my business, my family, and my personal life first and make them shine and focus on those relationships. And through this journey, I slowly and surely realized that I suck at communication, although I have a degree in it. And I became fascinated with human behavior. A wise business author once said, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your communication. I say, the quality of your listening skills on all five points determines the quality and yet the very existence of your business and of your personal life. The meaning of our communication is the results and the response that we get. And I certainly did not get the results nor the responses that I wanted. And I'm curious, TEDx Frankfurt, are you getting the results that you desire? Closing that big deal? Getting that date? And even though our ears are capable of picking up so many data points and words and distinctions and sounds, our brain doesn't and simply cannot process all of it. And listen to this, most people only remember about 20% of what they listen to, because they don't know what you know after our talk today. So how is one star listening keeping you in the dark? Listening is invaluable. Ego, desperation, arrogance, ignorance are the enemy of five-star listening and can cost one everything. And because leaders are learners, I finally realized that for me to shine bright as a business owner, as a mom, as a wife, it would be beneficial for me to learn, but not for me, for them. And in my action mindset, I thought, ha ha, I am going to read a book and be fixed and we can move on. So I read the book. The book turned into a six-year journey of learning and discovery by taking classes and continuous education, earning certifications and diplomas, conducting research and studies and interviews. And I'm sharing these hard learned and earned lessons with you today that you can implement immediately, starting like right now, and turn your sparkle from a one-star listener to a five-star listener. In all of my hundreds of interviews, one thing stood out. Five-star listening is crucial to building relationships and maintaining lasting relationships so you can actually get the result, results that you desire. A one-star listener picks up noise and spits out noise. A five-star listener picks up signals and communicates intentionally with clarity, because all relationships are built on communication, specifically listening because everyone yearns to be heard, but here's the dilemma, no one takes time to be heard. You'll see, you're going to start saving time when you start implementing this. So, to make it really simple, the problem with talking is listening. Now, I'm not a mind reader. Do I have any mind readers in the house? Okay, thank you. And because I'm not a mind reader, I dove deeper into those studies and research to shed some light on aspects of clean and clear listening. And I began to notice that successful, 
successful people rank as a five-star listener by being pointed and intentional on what they listen not just to, but for. Paying attention to the words that someone says and their body language and their tone of voice and the person's internal frame of mind and their purpose and intention. And it is not one or the other. It is all five. Those five points make a star a star and make it complete and robust because they're all linked together. So the word point, the words we choose, they reveal what we value, how we store information, how we learn. I'll tell you a quick story and share a story about my client. We call him the boss. And he was about to fire his accountant. He just had it. Because my boss, uh, my client, the boss, drives in his Tesla to work and he talks to his accountant every morning. And his accountant is not doing what the boss is asking him to do. So in our coaching session, he mentioned that he's about to fire his, you know what. Um, so I guided my, my client, the boss, to pay attention to how his accountant is relating to information. And he started listening on a deeper level of what the accountant is saying, what he values, and how he stores information. So he shifted, the boss shifted his words, and suddenly, like magic, the accountant did what was asked of him to do. So the words that we choose reveal those tiny nuances, and they're powerful because they're so tiny. So does someone value more planning? Or are they m looking at the best? Are they more grounded in caring or knowing and knowledge? Is someone taking information more visually or auditorily by hearing or by feeling kinesthetically or by thinking? And it's not one or the other. The physical point. Our body language. Have you ever watched a professional poker tournament? Some poker players are wearing what? Goggles. Why? Because we cannot not communicate. Our facial features give away information if we want it or not. Pay attention to what the body is saying. And sometimes, I have to tell my face to shut up separately. The phonetic point, our tonality. It's more important to pay attention to how someone says something rather than what they are saying. How are they drawing a picture with their intonations, with their tone of voice, with their volume, their pitch, their cadence? And when you write an email or copy for a website or a text message or social media post, that point goes complete mute. That's a problem because the person that's reading your social media post, text message, email, puts in their tonality in the mindset that they are in. And that brings me to number four, the mindset point. In which mental state is someone operating in in any given moment? Have you ever wondered why someone snaps in you, at you and you have done nothing? And you're like, or someone just smiles at you and you're like, oh, why are they smiling? What are they smiling about? Each person has their own inner reel running at any given moment, and it has nothing to do with the outer world. It has everything to do with what's going on in here. So start paying attention to how that shows up in people's behavior. And because you guys are not mind readers, 
ask a question, exactly. Because you don't want to jump to conclusions, and you really don't want to fall into that trap and, and, and assume and fill in the blank, exactly. And then the purpose point, with which outcome does someone communicate? Are they communicating for themselves? That's a win. Well, that's a win for whom? Just one person, and that is ego. Are they communicating for a win-win, a win for you, a win for me? That's an adaptive solution for both. Or are they communicating for a win-win-win? A win for you, a win for me, and a win for the greater good. Like my client with his accountant. The accountant wins, the client wins, the company wins, and each of their family wins. So success in life, personal and business, comes through the alignment of these five points and leads to a five-star ranking. So much so that other weaknesses become irrelevant. And that's when your results are going to show up successfully. The essential requirement to a five-star listening is to be present with the other person. Let the other person shine. So on one hand, you can feel frustrated and annoyed that you, just, that you haven't learned this material in the past. And on the other hand, you can feel a deep sense of gratitude because you already have the points to point your ears and get ranked as a five-star listener. Now. Because now you know what you didn't know before, and that means that you can actually slow down and intentionally, intention, intentionally listen to be more productive. Now, our words are powerful, and let's be honest. As humans, we have excuses and explanations why we don't do something. Ausreden wie ein Mauseloch. Whenever you're in front of a mirror, you will remember these five stars, and you will be pointed in your listening. And whenever you're in front of another person, you're going to remember these five stars and listen intentionally. You're going to take a, take a deep breath, and you're going to practice this 20 minutes a day. Unless you're busy, then you get to practice for an hour. <laughs> because when you talk, you're only repeating something you already know. And when you listen, you may actually learn something new. Fear less, listen more. Let the stars guide you and listen to relate, not to respond. Thank you, Frankfurt, for listening.